The Titans in Greek mythology were known as primordial beings, powerful and ancient, who essentially shaped the very fabric of the universe. Many are familiar with the likes of Cronus, Atlas and Prometheus, deities whose exploits and shenanigans echo even today. But after the rise of the Olympians and the complete takeover of Zeus, many titans who weren't cast down into Tartarus fell by the wayside and became mured into the periphery of both ancient belief and modern mythology. Amongst these titans, Euronymy emerges as a figure of unique significance, despite being overshadowed by her more renowned siblings. Euronymy, the titan goddess of water meadows and pasture lands, was believed to be a deity who oversaw the waters, specifically the river Limax, in the ancient city of Philagia. Greek geographer and explorer Pausanias explained in his Descriptions of Greece that there was once a sanctuary dedicated to Euronymy where the streams met between Philagia and the wilderness of Arcadia. This, Pausanias tells us, was a difficult sanctuary to reach because of how terrible the condition of the ground was during his visit. Of this sanctuary, we learn that there were many cypress trees and that there was only one day each year where the sanctuary was ever opened. Other than that, it remained closed and it was forbidden for anyone to open it. During the season of the festival, Pausanias claimed that whilst he never went inside the sanctuary, he did hear it said by locals that there were golden chains that bound a wooden image of Euronymy, whose upper body was like that of a woman, but whose lower body was like that of a fish. On the day when the sanctuary was opened, the local villagers would bring sacrifices before the altar and offer them up to the wooden sculpture in hopes of receiving Euronymy's blessing. In this account by Pausanias, we also learn that there was no unanimous agreement as to who or what Euronymy was. Of the locals that Pausana spoke with, some believe that Euronymy was merely the surname of the more popular Artemis, whilst those who had descended from ancient traditions declared that Euronymy was the daughter of the Titan Oceanus, thus making her an Oceanid. The Oceanids, often known as nymphs, can't necessarily be lumped into the same group, nor can they be defined by any one specific function. Whilst traditionally they are associated with lakes and streams, not all nymphs were idle bystanders of the water. Some were considered to be minor deities. Others were more significant in nature, such as Metis, Europa or Asia. Some were responsible for childcare, worked as servants, or were possibly even just scandalous love affairs for gods and mortal men alike. Euronymy was no exception, being known as the third bride of none other than Zeus himself, whom she bore the charities with. Three goddesses of beauty and grace seen to be attendants of the Olympians. In the Bibliotheca by Pseudo Apollodorus, we are told of this union and by Oceanus, daughter of Euronymy. He had the charities named Aglia, Euphrosine, and Thalea. The major mythological role of the charities was to attend the Olympians, usually during various dances and feasts, but also in pretty much whatever the Olympians wanted. We see them in Homer's Iliad assisting Aphrodite by bathing and anointing her after she had left Olympus when her affair with Ares was discovered. In the works and days, Greek poet Hesiod tells us that it was the Charites who adorned Pandora with necklaces so that she would be more enticing for Epimetheus. In the Theogony meanwhile, Hesiod refers to the Charites as dancing and singing with Apollo and the Muses. One might think of the Charites as royal servants or royal attendants of the Olympians, and that would be a pretty fair estimation. It's interesting that considering how vital these Charites were to the everyday affairs of the Olympians, that their creator, Euronymy, receives very little credit or even recognition. Then again, it also does make sense considering that the Olympians, like mortals, probably took the hired help for granted and didn't think that deeply about their servants much less about who had bore them. A few poets from history mention Euronymy becoming the nurse of Hephaestus, after Hephaestus had been expelled from Olympus and cast to the bottom of the ocean. In some versions, Euronymy took the banished Hephaestus to a cave, where she essentially raised him. In fact, according to the Iliad, one of the charities, Euronymy's daughter, marries Hephaestus when he's older. 
The Iliad makes note of Euronymi nursing Hephaestus. Hephaestus was cast from Olympus by Hera, who was disgusted at having born a crippled child. Then Hephaestus' soul would have taken much suffering had Euronymi and Thetis caught him. Euronymi, daughter of Oceanus, whose stream bends back in a circle. With them, Hephaestus worked nine years as a smith, working there in the hollow of the cave, and the stream of Oceanus around them went on forever, with its foam and its murmur. No other among the gods or among mortal men knew about him except Euronymi and Thetis. They knew since they saved him. According to ancient Greek writer Apollonius of Rhodes, another version of Euronymi exists that hints at a more conflicting origin story. Here Apollonius tells us that Euronymi had been married to the Titan of Phaeon, and that together they ruled in Olympus over the other Titans in a time before Cronus and Rhea. After Cronus came of age, however, we are told that he, as he did traditionally with his father Uranus, dethroned Ophion and conquered Euronymi before casting her down into the ocean. Modern historians seem to disagree as to whether this Euronymi is the same Euronymi who would marry Zeus and give birth to the Charites, but it is possible that there was an ancient version of the narrative that conflated the two. As always guys, if you've enjoyed today's episode on Greek mythology explained, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. Until next time.